All right, tonight we're going to look at how to solve the right problem and write the perfect problem statement. As we can see, the person in the picture there is surely facing a problem. They have their, head, their hands on their head and they're wondering, how am I going to solve this problem today? And it's very important that we understand why problems should be solved. And that's the first thing we're going to look into as for us to really understand why we're having this session in the first place. So before we, we really get to that, I want to ask a few questions a bit about problems. So then what is a problem? Okay, if we're going to talk about problems tonight, it would be very good that all of us are at one place when it comes to what a problem is. It's going to be very important for all of us to be in agreement uh, when we discuss what a problem is. So I wrote down to say that a problem is an unpleasant or undesirable condition that needs to be corrected. Okay, so an unpleasant and undesirable condition that needs to be corrected. So this can be true for you if you are facing a problem. Probably it's not something you desired, and it's probably something that's unpleasant. It doesn't make you feel good. For example, if you do not have access to clean water, um, there was a moment, there's a, there's a time where I stay uh, by my place, uh, we had a bit of a problem with the borehole. And so what happened was the water quality that was coming out from the tap was bad. So we found that to be very unpleasant and undesirable. And we actually had to be buying mineral water until the problem was resolved. And there are many such problems out there. Many people who are in an undesirable state, many people who feel an unpleasant feeling around certain conditions. And that's why you and me tonight want to understand how do we really identify these problems? Because as we've shared in different sessions in the past, if you can solve a problem, you can actually profit from it. If you can solve the right problem, you're going to be able to get the right reward for it. And problem solving today is the biggest market that is there in the entire world. Most of everything that we do in terms of business has to do with the problem being solved. And that's why this is very essential. Um, the other question is what is a problem statement? Because the second part of this particular session tells us to say, how do we write you know, a perfect problem statement? And the description here is, I'm not sure, sure it's jumbled on your end a bit, I think the word moved. A short description of you know, the issues that need to be addressed by a problem solving team. So it's a short description. And those of you who've had to write, say, maybe a project proposal, a research proposal, a business proposal, you will find that one of the things that you need to write is a problem statement. And that's very, very important. If anything, it's one of the opening statements that have to be there in your pitch deck. If it's a proposal, it's one of the major things that even your potential investor, your potential customer who want to look at. I remember when I was pitching a, a, a particular project to a customer, a client, I really had to work on the problem statement because if, the, if I missed that part, there was a good chance I was going to miss that entire deal. So it's very important that you understand how to write the perfect problem statement and we're going to look at that in a moment. So I hope we're excited to get into tonight. So what will we look at tonight? So we're going to firstly, we're going to look at why we need to clearly define a problem. Then we'll quickly go to how to solve the right problem and then write in the perfect problem statement. So if you have your paper pen available, make sure that you jot down some few things, make sure you capture a number of these things, okay? So we're gonna look at these three things. So if you are excited and you want to get to learn, just let me know in the chat box, be able to type in uh, a word and say solve just type in solve you know solving problems so just type in solve if you want us to get to started let me just get some interaction in the chats right solve so that i can know those who are chatting maybe you're getting to your box okay thank you tisha is number one says solve great timba says solve awesome solve from aaron awesome solve from tinashe great all right so Let's get started to solve the problem. So the first thing is why we need to clearly define a problem. Two quotes that I shared today, and some of you have read this, some of you haven't read both of them, 
and they are by a very astute person by the name of Albert Einstein, a famous science in the history of a famous scientist in the history of time. And he says these two things about the problems. The first being that if I were given one hour to save the planet, just one, I would spend 59 minutes defining the problem and one minute resolving it. Okay? I would spend 59 minutes defining the problem and one minute resolving it. And that was his way, the way he saw the, the world, the planet. And he said, he saw that the problem was up to 59 minutes, which is, if I do the math here quickly, I would say that's almost, that's obviously above 90% of the time he was allotted. He would say he would spend 90% of that time just trying to define the problem. And why he said such a thing is because he understood that if you can clearly define a problem, then you are already more than halfway to solving it. And that's very true. You realize that if you can really get a hang on, even if you're doing a project proposal for your final year, your thesis, one of the major things you want to get right is your project, is your problem statement. You really have to define the problem to par. Once you do that, the rest of the project becomes simple because it's going to funnel out all the unnecessary stuff and just keep you focused on the actual goal. Another thing he says is that the formulation of a problem is often more essential than its solution. So it means that most of us have participated maybe in a competition or have tried to write a proposal and we were quick to rush to the solution so that we know we could wow the, the client. We are quick to just try to write the solution or to talk about our product without really taking the time to actually define this problem. And what that did was that it robbed us of the opportunity to actually ensure that we have got a quality problem being solved. And I'm going to share with you some of those effects in a moment. So even if you are an employee at a company, remember this is management insights, and some of us are going to be working for different companies and you want to build your career. Even when your boss tells you to work on a project, I've had to work on a number of projects. I have a part-time job as well. I don't do it for the money. I do it for the lessons I learned from it. Uh, and I deliberately don't take money so that I'm never caught up. But one of the things I've found out is that each time I'm working on a project, there's a temptation to rush to giving the solutions without really defining the problem. And that has got consequences. And I'm going to share them in a moment. So let's find out those things. These are some core regrets that happen to us when we skip the problem phase and rush to the solutions. The first regret is that we're going to have missed opportunities. Okay? So if we rush to solve a problem without really defining the problem itself, we're going to have missed opportunities. And these opportunities could be a different kind of opportunities. It means that instead of you maximizing on your product, you may end up losing out on so much money and so much gain you would have got because you are in a hurry to go to the solution without really defining the problem. And that will be clear in a moment. The second regret is you're going to have wasted resources. Can you imagine having to do a project for a client and you are more than halfway through and you realize that you are actually solving for the wrong problem? You've already paid labor costs. You know, you've already bought equipment. Then you realize that, no, instead of us actually being able to, uh, to change the windscreens of the car, we were just supposed to change the entire car, you know? Because even when you change the windscreen, you found out that that car has been banned from, from being driven in the country because maybe it has had a lot of accidents. So maybe because you rushed to really find out what the biggest problem was, you may actually discover that you wasted resources and that depends a lot. It also could be, for example, if um, you think you're going to be solving a food need in your community and you invest heavily in doing uh, maybe muffins, depends on what you're working on. And you realize later on that actually, even though people were not having breakfast in that community, most of the people in that community don't prefer muffins, they prefer scones. 
okay? And then you've already invested greatly in the recipes and everything. So you want to avoid wasting resources. The third thing is that you get wasted time. Time, I've put it away from resources because resources could be labor, it could be a whole lot of stuff that you get to use and put into place. But why I've separated time is because time is something that you can't save. You can save up resources, but time you can't save it. You can only spend it. And if you spend your time solving the wrong problem, this is time you'll never get back. Another regret would be missed awards and rewards. I happen to have been privileged to win uh, the Sadiq Innovation Challenge with, the, with my team at Make Light. And one of the reasons why we actually got that far was because we were able to clearly define the problem we were solving. It's the first thing that falls on a pitch deck and investors, potential investors are going to look at that. I was able to get to uh, sign deals with board of directors to become co-founders at Make Life because I was clearly able to communicate with them the problem. And you're gonna find out that even as you go there to different people and you do what they call an elevator pitch, you really need to get your problem very correct. You need to be able to interest, whether it's that celebrity, it's that politician, it's that a CEO of a company, you need to be able to impress them by quickly telling them the problem statement the right way. And I, and I think something to add here is that if you've ever pitched to someone, what you want to do is you have to make sure that as you define your problem, you draw people in. Let me give you an example of how I would start a pitch concerning a, a product that actually we are doing as Make Live and as at the moment is getting a lot of headway. One of the things I would do is I would start by mentioning the problem and how it's affecting people so that by the time I'm coming to the product, it's going to be clear. I'll say something like, have any of you ever done a network marketing business that turned out to be a pyramid scheme? Or do you know any person that ended up having a pyramid scheme situation? So now what I've done initially is that I've alerted people of a problem I might be trying to solve. So now everyone is waiting to hear what comes next. And then now you start progressing by being able to talk about the results of that particular problem. But I'm gonna share in more detail how you phrase that, the cause, the effect side of a statement, you're gonna find that out. I just wanted to let you know that it's normally the first thing that picks people's attention, okay? Sometimes you may just start to, to talk about maybe say Munyum where they don't have clean drinking water. So you need to be clear about how you communicate that. Uh, the second thing is that increased efficiency of ideas implemented. If you understand and define your problem clearly, your ideas, these brilliant ideas you're so happy about, these disruptive ideas, you're talking about disruption, we're going to disrupt how things are done in, you know, in the economy through bringing our product that deals with taxation. And you're so excited about this taxation system that you have. If you miss it, you are going to reduce the efficiency of that solution. You'll find maybe even within a few months, you're already beaten and out of the game because you miss some essential components that and another competitor quickly picks up from what you've made a mistake and quickly phases you off. I mentioned in one of the very first meetings that we have that technology is greatly becoming obsolete fast. And you're going to find yourself having an idea that will be obsolete. Yeah, just from pitching it, just from getting a deal, and someone is already offering something better than you. So it's very cardinal. I don't, I don't know who's writing on the screen. Um, okay, thank you for rubbing it. Awesome. Just a minute. Yes, so another thing, the third thing being increased quality of solutions. If you can clearly define your problem, the quality of your solutions will be greatly increased. It means that you'll be able to deal with the small things, the nitty gritties of your target market. You make sure that when people experience your product, they appreciate it because it's a quality product, because you took into consideration a number of things. I mentioned one of the reasons why Zoom actually has won the game. When you talk of Google Meet, you talk of Microsoft Teams, you talk of Google Hangouts, all these are not doing as well as Zoom is doing. Quite okay, Zoom may have its one or two problems, but it's doing way better because 
they really took time to provide a quality solution to the users such that when you use Zoom, you're mostly satisfied. I've tried using Google Meet. It's a great product, but the challenge is like in this situation, when I'm sharing my full screen, you're not going to have a proper full screen experience. It's very hard with Google Meet, you know, but there's different stuff that Zoom was actually able to pack its solution with. So to move on into things that now you want to get to find out and hear about, how to solve the right problem. I've limited this to five things. Okay, these are five things, and this is how I, uh, how I listed them. At the end of the day, there are four, actually supposed, that's supposed to be five, there are five types of questions to ask yourself, okay? And that's how large is the problem? How urgent is the problem? How specific is the problem? How important is the problem? And how beneficial is the problem? I call that Lucy B, okay? So if you're Lucy, I named it after you. <laughs> this is Lucy B, all right? And oh, there's a Lucy on the line, all right. So <laughs> if you know a Lucy, tell them there's Lucy B somewhere. Uh, so you need to ask yourself this question. How large is the problem? By large, I mean, uh, to what extent is it going to impact lives, okay? How agent, I'm talking about if you don't solve it today, what will be the difference? Will it show? Will that difference be seen? How specific is it? How important and how beneficial? And let's get into some detail. When we talk about how important a problem is, we're talking about the basic needs it will meet, okay? The very basic needs it's going to meet. And if you talk about important, what can be important to one community may not be important to another community. If you are looking to, uh, for example, supply clean drinking water, you're not going to come to a central business district like Lusaka and say that's the solution I want to bring. Or you're not going to decide to bring solar lamps to us. Well, maybe now with the Zesco power cuts and whatnot, it may be very important for us. But you must be really able to check out the importance. At the end of this, I'm going to share for you questions that tackle all these things because for you to define the right problem, you need to ask the right questions. Right now, I'm just sharing with you the five areas in which you must be thinking in. So the questions can be any number amount of questions that help you better answer these five things. So you ask yourself many important questions. For example, you can ask yourself, why is it important for us to provide um, lunch packages for students at the University of Zambia? So that's one question. And maybe someone will respond to say, well, many students at the University of Zambia have got classes from as early as nine all the way to about 16 hours. And they only have one hour of lunch. They don't have enough time to prepare their own lunch. So if I come up with a solution to actually provide lunch, lunch is the best meal for me to eat than breakfast. So it could be that. Why is it important? So you could ask yourself a number of why questions. There's actually a system used in Toyota. They call it the, the four why system when they're trying to define how important a problem is. They ask themselves why, why, why. So if you answer one why, you're going to ask yourself to say, but then why are you choosing to provide? So you make sure your, your, your lines are, on old, are actually silenced. So you could keep on asking more and more why. So you ask say why, it's because, okay, the people don't have time to cook food at lunchtime. The next question would be, but why are you only targeting maybe lunch? What if you also targeted supper? And so if I have the answer to that, then it's going to help me better understand why lunch is the better reason. So you need to define why it's important. Specific, when we talk about being specific, your problem must always reach out to either a specific customer, a specific location, a specific reason, okay? It must be as clear as can be. I've often talked about how not every person is your target market. It's just specific people. So the best type of problems, if you're trying to have your right problem, you need to be thinking, is my problem specific? If people look at my website, will they know who this is for? At Make Live, we are all about management solutions. You're going to find us doing management consultancy, management coaching. You're going to find us doing management contracting, management events, project management. We're all about management. 
And with our management, we only target three particular people. We target businesses, we target professionals, and we target entrepreneurs. If you're not among those, we are not our market. And again, we go more specific in the types of businesses we target. Right now, we target businesses that have got a need for management, more so at a startup level, but we also have some corporate packages. So the more specific your problem is, and to the kind of crowd it reaches, the better chances are there for you to actually retain a profit. Sorry, I don't know why it's going to the last page. Okay, sorry, I kind of skipped that. All right, so the third thing is how agent. You need to ask yourself, how agent is this? I've often talked about the need for you to have the right taming. If your problem is agent, then it's got a market for it that can get you in business fast. Sometimes we miss it because we start solving problems that do not have an agent need. And before we know it, we end up having a whole lot of product that no one wants to buy. Initially, when the whole COVID-19 was starting, there was an agent need for masks. And those who are the first people to rush into doing it earned a lot of money. But now the need for a mask is no longer as urgent because a wide amount of the population has already been served. So the level of agents is not high. So today it's possible for you to have masks and they're going to be very slow to sell. So it's very important to ask yourself, is this an agent problem? And make sure you save it whilst it's true returns agency. How large is it? I've already talked about how large it is. In as much as your problem can be specific, there must still be a large amount of people it can reach. If you're targeting startups, it's specific, but there should be a number of startups in your environment. How many startups are there in Zambia? I must ask that question. And I should be able to have numbers. When you've ever pitched, one of the things we're required to do is to have specific numbers. So you do researches. For example, when I was doing an online project, I had to go to Zikta and find out how many people are online in Zambia. We've got over 6 million people online in Zambia. So you need to be as specific as possible. And from those 6 million, you need to be able to define who exactly is your target market. So if it's large enough, then it's a problem worth solving. If it's small, for example, you're just trying to serve a very niche market. Uh, for example, maybe uh, people who eat um, keton food. Is this food called ket keton? People who just want to eat healthy, reduce on carbs and whatnot. In Zambia now, there's a market for that because many people are more sensitive about health and whatnot. But if your package is very uh, niche and you don't have a large enough market, you may want to reconsider the problem you're solving. Unless you're doing it for charity purposes to that specific need. The fifth area you need to be thinking about asking the right questions. Uh, how beneficial is it? By beneficial, remember at the end of the day, you're in business to make a profit. Even now, social enterprise says get into business with the goal of, service, of, of making a profit. Initially, the idea of a social enterprise, if you've heard of that, was for it to be a non-profit way of being able to solve the world's problem. But today, social entrepreneurship has broadened to for-profit businesses as well. And so you need to ask yourself, at the end of the day, will this be beneficial? If this has been helpful, I'm now going to share with you the last thing and those are some questions that you can take right now. I love being practical. So make sure you write down these questions and ask yourself these questions if you are to write your proper problem statement. And before I go to the next page, I want you to understand something. Your problem statement, like I defined there, is a description, okay? And your description could be a sentence, two sentences, or it could go as much as blocks of sentences that clearly define the problem stage by stage. It matters why you use that. If you're going to be pitching your problem statement in a pitch deck as an elevator pitch, you want to limit your problem statement to only one or two sentences. And that means you only answer the first question, which I'm going to show you very soon. Let me just make sure my... The first question is, what is the problem? Okay, what exactly is the problem? And if you're taking a screenshot, make sure you take a screenshot of this. So does it relate to the cost or money, time or access, service or product quality, health, safety, or risk? I want to read with you how I answered this question for Make Life's product 
and you're going to be able to just, I'm gonna share this recording. So when you have an opportunity, you can take time to listen and you can assess the wedding. There's just, there's a limit to how much I can be able to uh, put on a slide sometimes. So I asked myself, what is the problem? And this is the way we answered it. And those of, please don't be offended if you're doing uh, a network marketing business, by the way. So this is how we answered it. it. Says, investment in network marketing business is too risky for the investor. Whether it's the illegal pyramid scheme type that offers no securities for investment or the ones that provide products to sell. Now listen to this. The second sentence says, resulting in either total loss of investment or a non-liquid form of investment locked up because products can be hard to sell for most. So we've identified that whether it's a pyramid scheme or it's a, a, a network marketing that gives you product, at the end of the day, you may lose all your investment in the pyramid scheme or you're going to end up with a bunch of products that you failed to sell because it's definitely hard. So that's our problem statement for the what. If you're going to pitch to investors, this is the one you want to tell them if they don't have enough time. Tell them that problem. And for it to be more clear, it's supposed to tell them the cause of the problem and the effect. If you noticed, I first mentioned the cause of the problem. You make an investment without securities, right? And the ones that have securities are products that are difficult to sell. So that's the cause of the problem. Then the effect is this. You can end up losing your entire investment. So for you to have a right and very effective problem statement, when answering your what, you need to know the cause or the effect. So whether it's a cause related to money, to cost, to time, to access, to service or product, you must be able to clearly define the cause or the effect and state it. And those of you can try to actually uh, do this right now where you are, be able to define what's the cause of the problem. So you could say something like Munyumbwe, is very far from the CBD areas, the central business districts, where water is purified. Now, what's the effect? So you say, resulting in there being unclean water because of lack of purification systems. So I've mentioned the problem's cause and the effect. And that's how you can define a clear problem statement with the what. But sometimes you may be writing a problem statement for a business proposal a project proposal and people want to find out more detail. So this is where now these other questions come in. You can ask yourself, why is it a problem? So for, for that reason, you need to describe the pain associated with the problem. So I'm gonna read with you how we define why is it a problem. So this is how I, I wrote it. I said, the problem results in investors losing out completely on their hard end money. So why it's a problem is because I worked hard for this money and I'm losing it because I invested in a business that didn't offer me a security to hold on to. Hope it's clear. The third thing, the third question, you'll take time to listen to this so that you can actually be able to write down what I wrote and you can just use that as a template to actually write yourself powerful problem statements. So the next question you ask, you ask yourself is where is this problem observed? Remember, you're supposed, supposed to be specific. So it can be the customers you're dealing with, the products or services, the departments and the locations. Okay, so you need to be as specific. So uh, you can say something like this. This problem is evident, sorry, this problem is evident each time, each time, so just a minute, there's something that I'm, I've skipped a bit. Okay, yes. so why is this problem? Observed. So this problem is evident each time investors get paid monthly salaries in Zambia and when they try to maximize their disposable income and end up losing it, losing all of it. So this problem is observed at the time of month and most of the time when uh, people in Zambia who've got disposable income actually get paid and they want to invest some of that disposable income or it could be even the students that benefit from that. So then the other question you want to ask yourself is, who does this problem affect? It's very important. Who's affected most by this? If it's the people in Munyungwe, it could be the families there are affected because there's no drinking water. And as a result, the nation is, has a high mortality rate. 
So who's most affected? And lastly, when did we first observe the problem? You need to know how long the problem has been in existence. When were you first aware of this problem? Is it a recent occurrence or has it been around longer? When did it start? For example, COVID-19 wasn't a problem that wasn't always there. And you need to understand the genesis of the problem. I know what I shared is a mouthful. And I'm hoping that I've communicated the mindset. Remember Lucy B, large agent. If someone says I'm asking for the recording, okay, great. Large agent, specific, important, and beneficial. Always be thinking Lucy B when you're dissecting your problem. Then ask right questions to be able to what? get the right problem. And I've given you some questions you may ask.